focused on improving conditions for children and adolescents in need of care and protection, strategic in seeking greater opportunities for youth empowerment, deliberate in enhancing brand Jamaica through cultural policy and industries framework, the working targets for the Ministry of Youth and Culture in financial year 2014-2015. I can confidently say that the Ministry of Youth and Culture has been doing our part to work and certainly improve the lives of children in Jamaica. And the 2014-2015 fiscal year is no different, so the Ministry has dedicated $1.7 billion to the year's task. Among the targets, reviewing the licensing regime for the 50 privately run residential childcare facilities on the island. The aim of this exercise is to ensure that all entities licensed to operate as children's homes and places of safety, not only have the physical facilities, but are also fit and proper with staff and the requisite training and experience to offer the new standards of care that we will be insisting this year upon them. The Ministry will also be implementing a $58 million three-year case management system to standardize and harmonize services to children. It will make it possible to track a child from entry into the system until he or she leaves. The system will also allow for the seamless sharing of information between the CDA and other child-serving institutions. In the meantime, a new board is overseeing the transformation of the Maxfield Park Children's Home into the island's model child care facility. To cater to children with physical, psychological and behavioural health problems, the Ministry has partnered with Jamaica Social Investment Fund to construct a therapeutic centre. The Child Development Agency is supporting the action through its parental assistance and training programme. Meanwhile, review of the Child Care and Protection Act is progressing smoothly and amendments are now before the Attorney General. The 1958 Adoption of Children Act is also under review to make it harmonious with the Trafficking in Persons Act. Empowering our young people by creating favorable conditions for them to develop their talents and actively participate in the labor market is essential for the economic and social development and for achieving our vision and our goals for Vision 2030. And so, the Ministry, through the National Youth Service, has introduced or expanded its programs to cater to the diverse needs of Jamaica's young. $124 million have been set aside for new programs. A combined $55 million will help 1,700 young people access entrepreneurship support through two different programs. 10% of the space in the Entrepreneurship 101 program has been reserved for youth with physical and developmental challenges. A special empowerment program for 100 youth with intellectual disabilities will also be rolled out. And another 4,000 young people will be impacted by a program dubbed Youth Roadmap to Succeed. This is to make sure that they receive the cutting-edge training that is now being in used internationally to transition from school to work. And we're committing $40 million to this new project. A $20 million enrichment program for 500 at-risk youth is also planned. An $8 million partnership with the CPTC will deliver training and work experience in animation, graphic design and videography to 40 youth. Another $8 million has been allotted to an events management and production program being facilitated by the JCDC. $176 million will be used to execute existing successful programs at the NYS, benefiting more than 5,000 young people. These include the graduate work experience, summer work, access to higher education, and financial assistance programs. Community-based development projects will also be targeted through the NYS's volunteer program at a cost of $16 million. We are doing this as we intend to impact over 11,500 young people this year to the tune of $322 million towards ensuring them that we get them equipped, involved and productive. For us, the culture and creative industries gives us a solid global competitive advantage and we are committed to utilizing it for the prosperity of our people. 
As such, the ministry will be exploring ways to maximize on the economic gains from talents through the certification, registration and classification of cultural practitioners and organizations. This development ties in well with the recent establishment of a National Cultural and Creative Industries Commission aimed at positioning Jamaica to benefit from developments in the global market. With a budget of $14 million, an artist management division will be opened at the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission to identify markets for talents in the JCDC Festival of the Arts program. Independence 2014 has been billed as a spectacular event. Over the six days, several activities have been planned to include music, arts and food festivals, independence conversations and emancipation vigils. On the local level, community talent is expected to be showcased through the JCDC's Big Stage Talent Competition. Some 2,000 youth from rural and urban centers are being targeted. The Jamaica National Heritage Trust will be establishing heritage clubs in some 50 schools, while the Negril Lighthouse and the Halfway Tree Courthouse are among a list of 12 sites being designated as historical sites under the JNHT Act. The National Library Service will be making more of its catalogue available online. To increase civic education, the Ministry will be opening two new museums, the Natural History Museum and the National Museum West and a comprehensive review of the operations and governance arrangements of the Institute of Jamaica will be carried out in the 2014-2015 financial year. The review is being funded by the Chase Fund. Having completed a status report on its operations, the National Reparations Commission will be working in tandem with the CARICOM Reparations Commission and the International Reparations Movement. Focused strategic and deliberate. We cannot and we will not leave it to chance.